Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoteric and a continuing series, Sega Race Renaissance, where I review every single arcade release 3D racing game Sega ever made in a retrospective fashion, and today we got Sega Rally 2, obviously the sequel to the original Sega Rally on Model 2. Before we get too far involved though, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like, subscribe, and that notification bell definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. But damn, Sega Rally 2 is an outstanding game, and I will be cutting in some Dreamcast footage, but to start, we're playing this on the always outstanding Supermodel Emulator. It emulates Model 3 and gives you a bunch of enhancements, including forcing 16x9 widescreen support that was never in the original release. This is even better than playing on the arcade hardware, and if you haven't tried Supermodel out yet, I highly recommend you do so. But Sega Rally 2 is a bigger, faster, prettier looking version of Sega Rally, and it really depends what day of the week you ask me if I say whether I prefer this game or the original Sega Rally more. As I'm doing this voiceover, I'm probably going to say I enjoy Sega Rally 2 more, but when I do the voiceover for Sega Rally, I might change my mind. That's how good both of these games are. But if you can't tell already, this game is a blisteringly fast rally game and it is outstanding at what it does. The sense of speed, the sense of momentum drifting around the corners is some of the most fun you can have in a Sega racing game. Now the cars do feel a little bit more arcadey in Sega Rally 2 than they did in the original Sega Rally and I kind of actually like that, but all the different surfaces we get are outstanding in the control department. But moving over to the Dreamcast version, you're going to see there's a major graphical downgrade. And obviously, Dreamcast couldn't keep up with Model 3, but this is a Windows CE game for Dreamcast, and those always came with a lot of issues. This game runs at 60 frames, or then double buffers down to 30 frames per second. It jumps around. You can put a cheat code in to lock it, but honestly, it just feels a little bit unsteady no matter what we're doing. Now we move over to the second course in Sega Rally 2 on Model 3, and in the first person cockpit view, this is just running at such an amazing clip and the sense of speed is so great. The blurring of the walls as you slide past them, you get into the zone when you're playing this game. You know each turn's coming up, you get the little indicator and you get excited for that drift. Throwing that car around is just so much fun. And if you do have the ability to hook up a wheel to your PC, definitely use one. It increases the performance and the fun outside of hitting those people in the fence right there compared to a controller ever will. Don't get me wrong, it's really good with a controller still, but a wheel and a pedal set with Supermodel are the way that you want to play something like this. It is just spectacular. But you can't talk about Model 3 without talking about how beautiful the hardware is. And this looks like something that could have come out on the Xbox 360, and you would have been happy by getting it. Definitely better than something the original Xbox could have pulled off. Model 3 hardware was just insanely powerful for its time and would continue to look absolutely incredible years to come even after you got to Naomi and even Naomi 2. This looks better than most Naomi games to be entirely honest with you. But speaking of Naomi, back to the Dreamcast version of this course and you're going to see again the lighting has dramatic changes. It's still a really fun game. It's still the same game. The physics still feel the same. It's still the same fun. It just doesn't look nearly as good. And the sense of speed is kind of almost lost. When I got this game on my Dreamcast after playing Sega Rally 2 in arcades, I was disappointed. As the years have gone on and I understand arcade hardware more, I know that there was never a possibility for the Dreamcast version ever to look remotely close to what Model 3 could do, but honestly, back in the day, it just bummed me out a little bit. But this game also has an amazing soundtrack with sound effects, so listen for like 30 seconds and I will be right back. Enjoy! Awesome soundtrack. The lyrics are a little goofy, but honestly, every Sega arcade racing game that has lyrics are goofy, and that's just kind of what you get. But in the snow section, this is when the game really comes alive, and that's why Sega Rally is great. But I think Sega Rally 2 did the best job of really articulating the handling curves 
for the snowy section because I just threw that entire car around that corner and it felt like pulling a donut back in high school when we'd get snow even though I ran out of time but bringing it back to the same area with the escort it just feels incredible you're almost touching that wall there but you just squeak it out it's what this game is all about that sense of being so close to the edge of screwing something up but not actually doing it there I rode that ridge a little bit too much and I did lose some speed but that's where this game comes alive in the pursuit of the almost accident but not now the Dreamcast does have some extra things going on so let's take a look at a course that you're not going to see in the model 3 version I am emulating this for some reason my Toro VGA box refused to sync to my capture card this time do not know what's going on probably have to order a third cable for that Toro honestly I wouldn't recommend that it. it's a great upscaler but the cables are so delicate no matter how careful you are with them they just seem to break but again Super fun, great handling, it just loses all the charm and flair from the Model 3 version. And that is what's so great about Sega Rally 2 on Model 3. You know, we get some tunnels here, but the lighting is just, it's not as cheery. Sega Rally 3, Daytona, Sega Rally 2 and 1 have always been really bright, colorful, fun games to look at. So I'm really not sure why the developers decided to mute down the color palette on the Dreamcast version to give it way more of this grayscale, not monotone, but just drab colorway. I want those poppy colors and we just don't get them here. Even the banners on the side of the racetrack just don't have the same vibrancy that the Model 3 version has. And that's unfortunate. That's probably my biggest complaint about the port is that it just lacks all that punch and pop of the Model 3 hardware. Now, of course, it's using a completely different hardware setup and sometimes that just happens. But I do feel like the developers and art team could have done a better job of making this look more like the Model 3 original but let's take a look at them side by side. It's always fun to throw these up in a comparison because this isn't just a review, it's a retrospective. Same course side by side. And you'll see on the right, the vibrancy just takes a hit. Obviously, one's in widescreen 16 by 9, one's in standard aspect ratio 4 by 3. So that's going to look a little bit different. But you can really just tell the difference in the sense of speed with them both next to each other. That is the big difference between Dreamcast and Model 3 hardware. Dreamcast just couldn't keep up with Model 3. But I do think the use of that Windows CE environment definitely affected it because most of the games that were written in Windows CE with that operating system running on top of just the base BIOS of a Dreamcast are going to affect things ever so slightly, but I don't want to get too technical on why that is. It's a racing retrospective, not a hardware and code teardown. But again, just moving on to another course, this game is just spectacular. Seeing the reflections of the street lamps in that back window, even though they're not true reflections, it is just a gag. It just looks so fun. Running this at 60 frames a second in the Supermodel emulator in 16x9 is just a spectacular sight to behold. And if you've never played Sega Rally 2 whatsoever, you owe it to yourself and you owe it to me to go ahead and play this game. Just go over to the Supermodel forums. You do need to become a member to download their latest release, but just go in there, hang out, be nice because I sent you and it's a reflection on me and get this game and try it out because I can assure you it is 100% worth your time. But this isn't the hardest game to find in arcade still. You're not going to see it as much as something like Daytona USA on Model 2 or even the Daytona sequel on Model 3, but it is still out there for a relatively decent amount of good arcades. You might see a cabinet for this hiding in the corner, and if you do, grab your quarters, throw them in, sit down and play because it's a better experience when you have a full arcade cabinet with that chair, the pedals, the wheel, and the shifter if you so choose to use it. But the entire Sega Rally franchise has been a hit for Sega. Sega Rally 3, probably the weakest of the three, but it's still a fun time. But these are the type of games, just play them in order. Play them in reverse order. Play them in whatever order you feel like doing it. Just do me the favor and actually play them. But you tell me what you think about Sega Rally 2. Leave me a comment below. I love hearing from you guys. I will be back next Wednesday with another episode in Sega Racing Renaissance. A lot of videos for the week as well. But I love Sega Rally 2. It's got everything I crave. We will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.